All right. All right. Hey there. So today we're going to be talking about just the fundamentals of sales, just to break everything down. We talked about lead generation before, um, and the next step on top of that is just going to be sales. So I think some of the first few things in sales is firstly, just having the confidence, having the confidence to understand that you should have no fear behind it. You're calling someone or you're texting someone and you're just establishing trust with them. You're not trying to immediately sell them something on calls, cold calls. You are trying to sell them something more or less soon. You're at least trying to pitch them, but there should never be a fear. No one's ever going to judge you for calling it. Companies hate sales calls, but some companies actually need marketing teams and sales teams to help them out. And a lot of times that's the case. So you'll get those bad situations. I've had a few situations in my life where people yell at me on the phone. It's actually quite funny. But then you have those good 15 minute phone calls that you have no idea or never expected it to be like that. But you're just talking with someone, getting to know them better and building that rapport with them. The more that you connect with a client on a personal level, the more that they will actually feel that you did your research, that you are interested in talking to them, and that you want to identify their actual needs. Identifying their needs is probably one of the most important things. So you're going to have identifying needs sort of up here because you're going to do that before you do anything. Wow, that's a messy circle. But next, you're going to be building the rapport. So building the rapport with someone is going to make them happy. There's my happy face. They're going to be happy that you're building rapport with them. A lot of times they won't be, but most of the time they will be. And with that, you of course have to present yourself. You have to present yourself well. You have to be, I, whenever I do my sales calls, I'm standing up, I'm making sure that I'm walking around free, free of mind, free of everything, not allowing myself to feel secluded and hunched over, make yourself big, show that confidence to them, and they'll be more confident in you. The more confidence that you have in yourself, your service, and your offer in general, the more confidence they'll have in you because they understand that you're not um, questioning yourself in your service, that you're not new to this, that this is something that you do on a regular basis. And if they're not able to need your help, if they don't need your help, or you're not able to help them, maybe they're looking for something else. Maybe a company, you're a marketing company, we're a marketing company, for example. Maybe they're looking uh, for a website builder or for Google reviews, something like that, that, that area. They already have marketing. They don't need it. And that's something where you still came with confidence. You still didn't have the fear to call them, but they're able to just tell you, like, oh, no, this is not something we're looking for at the moment. We're looking for this, this, and this. And like, oh, great. Well, at least thank you for letting me know that if we have something like this in the future. Like for our company, we're looking into doing SaaS Google reviews. Um, so with that, we'd be able to help companies with their Google reviews and not only do the marketing side of things um but that's some of the basics in terms of actually getting the sales call down you need to know your pitch you don't want to sound too salesy and all of that you can look online you can look pretty much anywhere and there are some key fundamental pitches i can't name them off the top of my head but a lot of them involve saying this is a cold call can i have 30 seconds of your time and if you don't want to listen to that you can just hang up immediately this, of course, is great. You want to differentiate from that since so many people use that nowadays that everyone hears that. I've had marketing come. I used to use that pitch. When I first started sales, I would use that pitch and I tried it. And I got this owner one time who was just, he was honest with me. He came to me and said, hey, I've heard this pitch three times today. I'm like, damn. Okay, so maybe, maybe I need to switch something up. So there's a lot of awakening moments. Owners sometimes will be straight up with you. I've had a few owners throughout my time of sales, throughout my learning process, be straight up with me, give me advice, say like, hey, you need to be different in these areas if you want to actually succeed. Um, some things like that. Some owners are very nice. Like they understand the position you're in. You're trying to start something up. You're building a business just where they were not too long before you. Well, probably years before you, but not too long before you. <laughs> and we'll just run through the rest of the fundamentals and then we'll go more in depth with them throughout this video. But I think the next important thing on this is answering objections. Answering objections. Wow. 
answering objections. <laughs> Drawings are just absolutely beautiful, but we'll ignore that. Answering objections. <laughs> answering objections. So how do we answer objections? There is going to be a lot of objections that owners throw at you. The most popular one that you will hear to date is I'm not interested. Every single owner will tell you this. Well, not every single owner, but you'll hear this throughout a majority of your sales calls. And if you have a sales team, you need to teach them also how to answer these objections. Because a lot of times people will hear that. I'm not interested. And just be, oh, okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, they'll say, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for taking my call. No, we, we want to figure it out with them. We want to identify their needs. We don't want to just give up on them. We're a sales team. We want to make sure that they understand we're helping them as as best we can. We're not just trying to earn money. A lot of companies are out there just for the money. That causes a lot of trust issues for companies. A lot of trust issues, especially those who charge 3 to 5k for their services. If your service is 3 to 5k without any testimonials, the trust issues that owners will have, it's just crazy. But with all that answering objections, not I'm not interested is one of the most common objections that you will hear from an owner. How our company approaches this and how I've taught myself and my sales calls as well as my other callers how to handle these situations is to just ask them feel some questions out they say i'm not interested and you respond with oh does that mean your current marketing strategies are running at full capacity or up to the best performance that you believe they could be if they respond yes awesome you can ask them one or more question or you can just ask them about their business or they end up kind of in a situation where they don't really want to talk to you anymore, then you feel that and you're like, oh, well, thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that your business is running well. Thank you so much. If they end up responding to that question and saying like, oh, well, it could be better. There's your green light to push a little farther. You could say, oh, so what aspects of that could be better? Um, well, let me think here. We're missing a sales rep. Maybe our marketing is not good. Our advertising team isn't performing very well. Perfect. Put your solution for their problems don't just push your solution on top of them when you don't even know if they need it your goal as a sales team and your goal as a marketing team is to understand if they need the help and not just kind of pushing it on them so if they say these things well green light for you well look i have this solution and i don't know if it'll exactly go with your system or if it'll integrate with your system but we could we could test it out would you want to hop on a call with our founder um, or, or if I'm the one calling, if you want, do you want to hop on call with me in the next day or two, so I can walk you through how our system works and see if it would be something of interest to you. They'll usually say yes. A lot of owners do want to hear out marketing teams. A lot of them, if they don't have time, if they simply don't have time, don't push it. And you can call back. You can ask them, oh, I like I see you're busy. Let's give an example here. I worked with a company who um, we worked very well together. And they ended up having to shut off our services for a little bit. We're still shut off from them until about July. They are moving locations. If you're contacting a company as a cold call and they're looking to do something drastic, if they're moving locations, if they're doing something in that manner, then you don't want to put a burden on them of trying to also move and pay for your services at that time. So if it's a situation like that, a lot of sales teams will forget to follow up or honestly just feel like the owner is not interested but a lot of times that situation is they're just so stressed and busy with their own business you got to be patient with them it's like oh like hey you're, you're doing a move right now would you want me to contact you in the next month when you're more settled in a majority of the time they'll say yes the next step is getting them to actually follow up and answer within that month but if you follow them up throughout the month email them if you have a number if you text them just a little updates ask how they're going you don't want to create a situation where they just feel super salesy. You want to create like a situation where you get to know them a little better. Like, for instance, I do LinkedIn outreach for our business. And a lot of that is statistically just asking them how they're doing, feeding out some questions, getting to know their business a little better. You try to create a conversation. You don't just want to push the sales on them. And then if they're not interested in the sales, then backing off completely. They may be interested in the sales. It may just not be the right time. And that's the that's the reality of it. Um, but back into where we were going with this. I don't remember where we were going with this. 
So what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm going to actually give you some role plays between me and a few of my callers. They're professionals in this industry, and I've actually taught them to sell call in the industries that we're doing, making sure that they understand what works for our for those niches and industries, as well as with particular callers. Like if you're calling, let's throw out, if you're calling roofing companies, your approach is going to be a lot different than if you're approaching a gym company or a wellness company. Those niches that are more customer-based and heavily rely on customer service compared to someone who sells a service and does installations, you're going to pitch those completely differently. And that's very important. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually cut in a role play that my team has done and prepared so that we can get a live example of how that actually works and how we can run through all of that just to give everyone a better idea of what they're watching and as well as what I'm saying. Hello? Yes, hi, this is Erica. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, how about you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Thank you so much for asking. So I was actually calling to speak with the owner if they're available. Yeah, that's me. Oh yeah, okay, perfect. So I just wanted to give you a call and ask if you're able to take on more customers each month. Um, I don't I don't know if I really have the budget for that. Oh, sure. Um, so looks like you've been approached, of course, and um what exactly do you think you don't have the budget for? Do you mean like marketing and to be more specific? Yeah, in terms of marketing and probably buying a service. Okay, got you. So let me just fill in about what we do. So we're not, you know, a marketing agency. We are an advertising agency and we focus on lead generation and marketing through advertising for companies just like yours who want to grow their customer base without, you know, having to pay large fees or even sign long-term contracts. And our business model is pretty much straightforward. We do have multiple packages and the most popular one that we're having right now is that we earn commission on appointments that we help you get. And from there, we would love to schedule a free consultation to learn more about your business, demonstrate how we work to get you the best results, and ultimately see if our company is a good match. Do you think that sounds like something you might be interested in? Yeah, so would that mean that there's no upfront cost? So let me just clarify that a little bit. So there is cost, but we don't consider it as it's upfront cost for us. Like there is an ad spend. And to be honest with you, um, the ad spend is in terms, you know, in terms of the ad spend itself, there are several packages and the owner would be best to discuss that with you because it's per agreement with the owner. So each and every customer that we deal with or business that we deal with, he, he offers them several packages depending on, on their own situation. And of course, the higher you spend on ads, the more you get appointments, but still it's per agreement with the owner. That's why I was suggesting that we can have a free consultation to understand a little bit more about your situation, your business, and from there you can also understand how we can help you, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, that that sounds interesting. Okay, sounds really good. So um, when do you think you'll have like 15, 20 minutes of your time for this free consultation, maybe um, tomorrow or this or later this week, if possible? Yeah, I could probably make tomorrow work. Okay, awesome. What time will suit you best? Around around two. Around two. Okay, perfect. So um are we talking like Eastern, Central, Pacific? We're talking, uh, Pacific. Pacific. Okay, so it's two PM PST. Perfect. And what is a good email so I can send you like some literature out your way along with a link to the meeting? So I gave a lot of content to mm. you but this is like information for them. So mm -hmm. usually on my calls, I will not talk that much because I'm gonna lose them. Yeah. So it's just giving them more information about how they can handle the situation. Um, like they can say different things, they can say it at all, um, so they're free to do whatever, but at least this context gives them more information about how I can handle situation. Hello? Hi there, am I speaking to the owner? Um, yes, who's this? Hi, this is Blake. Uh, I'm with a marketing company called Define Marketing. I just wanted to know, are you able to take on more customers this month? 
Um, hmm, marketing agency. No, I'm not really interested right now. Thank you, though. Oh, does that mean that your current systems are working like really well for you? Or is there anything that you feel could be better? Uh, so, of course, there's a lot of point of improvement, you know, there, I, I, of course, there are some things that could be better, but, you know, I've dealt with a lot of marketing companies and they're just so expensive and results are very poor. So I'm just not interested right now. Yeah. Hey, and I completely understand that a lot of marketing companies nowadays throw out a huge number and throw companies under the bus. I just wanted to let you know before you hang up and turn us away that we're actually a commission based company. So we don't actually get paid until you get results and we get paid off of those results. So would that, would that ease up your mind a little bit? Would you want to schedule a meeting? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm curious. Okay, perfect. Then I'll get you set up with our owner. He'd actually be able to give you a lot more information in terms of specifics, in terms of pricing and all of that. Um, but with all of that, so with what would be the best day that you'd be available here in the next day or maybe later this week? Uh, let me just check my schedule real quick. Um, I can do Friday. When you get an owner to talk more, they let their guard down. They're not as stuck up. They they feel a lot better because they actually think that you care about what you what their what their issues are. And of course you do. You're trying to find out more information, but not just giving them a bunch of information up front, which of course is good. It does work. A lot of owners want to know that, but kind of spacing it out. Like I, I told them we were a lead generation advertising company. And mm -hmm. would, would that be something that you're interested in? Then they say, oh, well, we've had trouble with marketing in the past um due to them sort of scamming us and then you can be like yeah well that's when you can bring them money you don't have to be specific about it but you can be like yes yeah, so we're a commission-based company uh we don't actually get paid unless you get paid so we want to if that eases up your mind a little bit we can move forward and maybe setting up a meeting to get you more information and figure out if we could actually even help you we it really depends on the type of owner that you're speaking with like if you're speaking with someone who their tonality is not that good they don't sound really interested i guess we can bring up the part where where, where we say we're commission based we don't get paid unless you get paid yeah. and if they're more easy going like you know they're listening mm -hmm. uh, we can just say whatever and wait for uh, questions or ask them a question after we finish our pitch before they ask us mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree with that. And I also wanted to just comment on your tonality uh, thing. Something that I learned recently, uh, looking around and looking at sales professionals and everything, uh, something that they did, which actually increased their rate of success, was if they got on a call and the owner sounded sort of, I don't know how to say, uh, grumpy, or maybe they just were busy and, and you could understand they didn't really want to be on the phone right now, you could mm -hmm. instantly kind of just say that. You could say like, hey, and are, am I speaking to the owner? And if they say, yes, this is the owner, like kind of rudely, you can be mm -hmm. like, oh, I, hey, I'm sorry. I, it sounds like that you're a bit busy right now. Have I caught you at a bad time? And they'll either say yes or no. And usually they'll say like, yeah, I'm busy with a client. And then you can respond, oh, yeah, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for taking that time away for you. Would there be a better time to call you later in the day? And then they'll give you a, they'll give you a time. You call them when they're in a better mood, probably when they've, completed the work with the clients that they're doing and then they're more ready to take your call they may not remember it but by the time you're calling them back and then you remind them like hey yeah we called you earlier and you said to call you later you were having a bit of a rough day how's it going now you can get that more personal connection with them and not just shoot out like how are you doing which a lot of people think salespeople just don't care but in reality, if you're saying it the second time after you've recognized they had like a rough day, then they'll actually feel more personal towards you, like that you actually took the initiative and cared about that. Usually they will say just call back later or they would not engage or they just hang up or they would just refuse a call back. Um, like most owners would do that, especially if they know that this is a cold call, you know what I mean? So it really depends on us as cold callers determine you know, to determine which type of person are we speaking with. The one who's gonna, he's just not interested. He doesn't want to get to be called back or the one that is now not interested because he's truly having a bad day or this is not a good time, but he might be open a later time 
or the one who is acting as if he's busy, but he's really not. He's just trying to drive you off, yet you can speak with. So there's a few types of owners that have that, that we've dealt with. So it's it's really it really depends on the cold caller and how they can know which which type of owner that they're speaking with. Was just sometimes hard to tell. Yeah, exactly. And to actually go further on that, to answer another thing that you just said, if an owner hangs up, nothing you can do. Honestly, yeah, nothing. They're not interested. But if someone says, um, for instance, yeah, give me a call back later. Mm-hmm. How do I say this? You you have to be not rude but in a sense kind of strict so someone actually said this to me the other day um i think it was or or actually this morning i I had a call with a client and she said like call back later and my response to anyone who says call back later it always hey so i i have a pretty busy schedule today could you give me a specific time that hopefully i could fit you into makes them psychologically understand they can't just push you around. You have a schedule, you have times that you're available and times that you're not available and they need to tell you a time. And for instance, if you, if say for instance, they say a time outside of when you're calling, then uh, you can be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking, I have to take another call at that time. It's going to be pretty long. Are you available the next day? It may seem like you're losing an opportunity and it may seem like you're pushing Actually, it does. It seems like you're pushing them around, which is what you want to get. A lot of businesses just frown upon sales. They think that they can over, they can just push them around as easy as they mm-hmm. can. And something that, that, that used to be what happened to me when I was cold calling, I'd be available for anyone at any time. And now right. I'm realizing the schedule needs to be established. If someone wants to call back later, they need to give me a time to call back. We are a busy company who can't just beat around the bush for everyone. We have a schedule. We have times that we're available. They need to give us a time. And if they're not available for the times we're available, then we make it work another time. It's just certain things like that. I just wanted to add on to what you said. As a marketing company, we never want to talk down other companies. That makes us look actually worse in the eyes of an owner because we're trying to put ourselves so high above everyone. If you, like say they said that they worked with a marketing company and it went pretty well, it just wasn't the perfect fit for them. Um, and then you say you ask that question about what they expected, and that will give us more information about what they expect for us. And we mm-hmm. never want to really talk about the other agency, nothing like, oh, yeah, we do so much better than them. We produce better results than them. No, no, no. Even with solar companies, when they ask me uh, about certain other companies that I know just from researching on Google, um, I always respond with, yeah, like they are a good company. They just have a different offer than us. We offer something direct while they offer something that's not as direct. Well, in better words than that, but in like a summarization. This marketing company, they want to test your ethics, you know, because if you're as a marketing agency talk bad about another one, you're just not that ethical. You're not that type of person that I might want to work with because it's not good to talk bad, bad about other agencies that do the same as you do. You got to be respectful of everyone's work. Yep, I completely agree. And that is what a lot of owners look for. That's more on the closing side. I'm not going to lie. But if they ask in a uh, cold call situation, of course, now everyone who watches this understands that you need to approach it as you don't want to compare yourself. You don't want to put any other companies down. They might just have a different service than us. They might just have a different offer. Who knows what it is? We don't need to get into detail about what they did or what Mm -hmm. they did badly. We just want to get into what the company's expectations were, how we can meet them, and make sure that we meet them and not talk down anyone else. Yes. And if, for example, they said, oh, I was with a marketing agency, they were so expensive whatsoever, you can just acknowledge. You don't have to necessarily say, oh, yeah, marketing agencies are very expensive, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to talk bad. Like, yeah, I do understand. You know, I know most marketing agencies right now um, are a a bit expensive to some owners. Yes, that is true. Um, But we do something differently. We do commission-based. So we advertise for you based on commission and we don't get paid unless you get paid. Does that make your mind at ease of it? And then we, and we just can go from there, like make it about us, not about their bad experience the meeting so we're not the closers you are and our purpose is to 
give them the information needed mm -hmm. to book so they yeah. can have more over the meeting. So not not to give too much, but give enough as you're asked to book that appointment. So if they ask a lot of questions, make sure to answer them in as, as short as you can, like give them the answer that they're looking for, but not give too much. So Blake can have something to talk over um, the, the meeting. Yep, exactly. And I think the last thing I want to add just to all of this, and I think I mentioned it before, um, but if you're ever in a situation where you absolutely have no idea what to say, say they ask something, for instance, about cost per lead, which I'll give you more information on that so that everyone's able to answer that question up front if they ask it, but it does vary. So it is a hard question to answer without doing research of their company. So if something like that comes up and they ask like, oh, what's the cost per lead? Just straight out front. You can simply just say, yes. Yeah, so it varies from company to company. Um, our owner will do some in-depth research on your company, find out what strategies would work best and how much those leads would cost based on your demographic. So if that would be something of interest, we can move forward with this. And so you'd be able to find out more from him. And yeah, that's that's pretty much how to handle that situation because you don't have to know that information. Even I don't even know that information until I research a company. So it's not something that you can just put a number on about all of them. But today we were dealing with an overall view of sales and how it actually helps. So with all that, that everything helped and the role plays helped give you a better idea of how situations can be handled. Of course, there is still the confidence. You need to have confidence in yourself, no fear. You need to build a rapport with the people, make them interested not only in your service, but in you. Make sure that you build a connection with them, not just super salesy. Um, setting, letting, letting their guard down, letting them be open with you. And I just hit my mic. And making sure that everyone's happy.